two days, we talked about the art of the Renaissance. First thing we talked about was techniques. So on your handout, you should have, the front side has a bunch of pictures. And basically we just went through these techniques. So on this slide and somewhere on your worksheet, you just need to write down that Renaissance means rebirth. Um, so this is kind of humanity's restart, if you will. First characteristic we talked about was realism and expression. And basically what this meant was art was trying to become more real. Artists were trying to make it more realistic. And the expression part, uh, they were trying to catch people's emotions. So as you can see in this picture, the figures are somewhat realistic. They're not the best. If you look at their feet, their feet are kind of awkward. Um, and then their expressions, you can kind of tell that they're very sad. Um, this is Adam. When they got kicked out of the Garden of Eden, he looks very um, ashamed. So they did a really good job of trying to catch how people felt. Next one is perspective. They get really good about making art look three-dimensional. So if you look at this picture, um, it's not flat. It feels like you can step into it. They used what's called a vanishing point, and that's when you pick a point on your paper, and then as you move away from it, everything gets bigger. Okay, next was classicism. They looked to the Greeks to help them make their art. And what they did in this was they made figures look very idealized. So what I mean by that is they would make a statue, but instead of making it life-size, they would make it 10 feet tall. They also made them look godlike. Um, the picture you have on your handout is of Mary and Jesus when Jesus was crucified. Um, and if you look at her really closely, you can see that there's kind of a halo around her head. So they're trying to make them these images look religious. Next we have geometry. So as you can see, the shapes that are in this picture, the main one, are triangles. And they do this for two reasons. One, a triangle can help you divide up an, an object and make it look better. So if you imagine this triangle in thirds, the one with the woman in it. So the top third is her head, the middle third is her torso, and then the bottom is the rest of her sitting down. She, I would say she's very proportionate. Um, she's not that bad looking. So the baby, on the other hand, he's kind of odd looking if you look at him closely. His head takes up about the top third, but then his torso takes up almost the rest of the triangle. And if you look at this child, he doesn't really look like a baby. They were really bad at drawing babies in hands. Oops. All right, next we have lighting and shadowing. They started using techniques that helped to make their art more dramatic, much like today. When you go and see a movie, uh, movies are trying to make themselves more dramatic. They're trying to see how many more people they can kill or how many more buildings they can blow up. That's what they were trying to do with art. So by shadowing this, the background looks really dark and it makes the uh, lady in the portrait, it makes her face kind of pop out. She looks like she's glowing. And if you look on her cheekbones and her forehead, that's also shaded to kind of make those uh, characteristics stand out. Last we had artists as personalities and celebrities. The artists of the time like da Vinci and Michelangelo, they were considered like the actors of our time. They were very famous. Everybody who had money wanted them to paint for them. Um, so they were very well known. 